Welcome back to the Biogen Virtual Community Lab. We're going to be doing another experiment today, so I hope you've enjoyed the ones that we've posted so far. So what we're going to be doing today is making our own lava lamps. So this is going to be a really fun experiment where we're going to make something that we can kind of keep and look at and, and play with for a while while we're at home. So I'm going to go through how to make it. Make sure you check out the protocol that is posted with this video. It has a lot of substitutions, so if you don't have the stuff that I use today to make my lava lamp, there's lots of other things you can use to make your lava lamp. So just check out that protocol and, and see if maybe there's something in your house that you have that you can use to make a lava lamp. So what I'm going to be using today is just water. So this is just water out of my sink vegetable oil, some food coloring, some baking soda, and some citric acid. So the easiest way to make this would just be to use Alka-Seltzer tablets. Um, those are a really easy way to make your lava lamp, but I didn't have any Alka-Seltzer tablets at my house. So I'm gonna make sort of my own using two of the ingredients. So in Alka-Seltzer, sodium bicarbonate and citric acid are the two ingredients that make Alka-Seltzer fizzy. And I happen to have those ingredients at my house. Um, if you have anyone in your house that does any like canning or pickling, they may, you may have some citric acid um, as well. So you can use this if this is what you have, but Alka-Seltzer works just fine. So if you have some of that, that'll work. And like I said, check out the protocol for a lot of other things that can also work for this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use some water. So you guys may notice that today I'm using some, some science glassware. So this is a graduated cylinder. I actually collect glassware. So I have these at my house to sort of play around with it and have some fun. But you don't have to use these, these specific scientific um, instruments. You can use things like glasses and, and measuring cups and the things that you have around your house. So we're going to want to fill this up about a third of the way with the water. So what this is that I'm filling up is just a soda bottle that I took the label off of and I rinsed it out really good with water in my sink um, to get all the soda out before I made my lava lamp. You can also, if you don't have any, any bottles like this at your house, you can just use a glass or, or an open top um, container. It's going to be a little bit less fun. So, um, the, the containers with the lids, you're going to be able to keep your lava lamp and you're going to be able to like shake it around and play with it a little bit more. But if you do it in a glass, you're still going to be able to see all the lava and it's still going to look really cool. So it's fine if you use a glass. So once you have your container about a third of the way full with water, then you are going to want to add some oil. So I'm going to use vegetable oil. You can use really any type of oil if you have baby oil at your house or some other type of cooking oil. Um, so we're going to fill it up the rest of the way with this vegetable oil. So you don't want to fill it all the way to the top, but you're going to want to fill it pretty full-ish. So you can really get your lava lamp experience. I'm going to use the rest of my oil. There we go. So you want there to be about twice as much vegetable oil as there is water. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around there. So once you have your oil and your water in your container, you notice that all the oil is on top and all the water is on bottom. So the reason that this happens is because oil and water are two different types of mixtures. So Maybe you've heard the saying that oil and water don't mix. That is absolutely true. So oil is considered a hydrophobic solution. So hydrophobic means it fears water, right? We know about phobias, about fears. So it means it doesn't like water. It's going to do everything it can to avoid coming in contact with that water. So it's all going to stay together and pack in here really close to have the minimal amount of interaction with that water that's on the bottom. Water is considered hydrophilic, which means water loving. So water loves itself. Good job, water. Um, so that's why 
since they're different types, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, that they don't want to mix. So you see that we have a really good separation between water and oil in our lava lamp. So what you're going to do next is you're going to get some food coloring. So this is going to make our lava lamp a little bit more exciting. So you can choose any color. I'm going to use blue today. And you're going to want to put several drops in your lava lamp, but you don't want to go too crazy. If you put too much, it'll make it really dark and then it'll be a little bit harder to see what's going on inside there. So I'm going to put about eight drops. And you see that food coloring is also made of water. So it went right through the oil and down into the water almost immediately. So it's in that, right on top of that water layer. So it wanted to be down there with the water and not up with the oil. So now if you were using Alka-Seltzer tablets, you would just break them up and you could put one little piece of tablet at a time in your lava lamp. But since I don't have any, we're gonna make our mixture here. So if you're using baking soda and citric acid, you're gonna wanna get about a spoonful of baking soda and then two spoonfuls of the citric acid and we're gonna mix them up really good. So baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, which is a basic solution. And citric acid is an acidic solution, it's acid. Um, and when bases and acids come into contact with each other, they form a reaction. So once we put these in the water, it's gonna dissolve them so they can come in contact with each other and that reaction is gonna happen and hopefully make some lava bubbles in our lava lamp. So we're gonna pour in a little bit and see what happens. There we go. So you see if you pour in a little bit, we're getting some, some bubbles that come up. So those are our lava bubbles, the blue bubbles that are coming up through. So then you can experiment and sort of play with this and see what happens when you add even more. So maybe if you're using Alka-Seltzer, you add another couple pieces of the tablet. And if you're using this powder, you add more of the powder. And the more that you add, the more bubbles that you're gonna get. So you wanna make sure when you're doing this part that your lid is off your container so that when it's making this reaction and making all these bubbles, they have somewhere to escape. So this is our lava lamp, pretty cool, right? You can see all the blue bubbles that are coming up to the top. So what's happening is, is that acid and that base react. They are pushing that water up through the oil and causing these bubbles to look like the lava lamp bubbles. So we're gonna let that go. Um, if you guys are excited and, and interested in the science behind these lava lamps, I'm actually gonna post another video where we go a little bit deeper into the science. So we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to be hydrophobic and hydrophilic, and we'll talk a little bit more about the acid-base reaction and, and how that works and how it makes our lava lamp look so cool. So when you're done, you can, and we're getting a lot of bubbles now, right? So you can, once you're sure the reaction's done and all this bubbling is finished, you can put your lid on, you can shake up your lava lamp and you'll see that that water and that oil kind of mix together for just a second. And then immediately you'll see that separation where the oil and the, and the water separate again. So you can kind of watch that over and over. It's kind of fun to watch to see how fast the water and the oil separate. Um, and you can always come back later and add another piece of Alka-Seltzer or another piece of the, this baking soda citric acid and it'll start these bubbles all over again. So see what happens, see how much you add, how long it lasts. You can really play around with it and have some fun with your lava lamp. So I want you guys to comment and maybe share some pictures below. So if you made lava lamps and they look really cool, maybe you can share a little clip of a video or a picture of your lava lamp. Um, you can also comment on there and tell us how it went. Tell us any other ideas you have for science experiments. Make sure to check out that, that video that I'm gonna post. It's a little bit deeper into the science if you're interested in that. Um, and just make sure you keep up with the virtual community lab while we're at home and we're, we're getting to do some fun science in our houses. So have a great day and I'll see you next time. I'm Alex Cameron, bye.